having looked at the standard consensus algorithm so we are going to borrow the ideas of fixed time stability to uh, to design alg consensus algorithms which are probably fixed time convergent so regardless of what every agent's initial belief is will you're guaranteed to converge enough to the consensus average consensus value in a fixed amount of time so so before describing uh, describing the scheme uh, so let's let's look at few results something that we have already looked at in the previous lectures but we are going to be needing them uh, in this proof so the first thing is so in, we derived this in the last lecture okay so this was something that we had derived in the last lecture another result that we had derived was summation i1 through n uh, summation through n i e i transpose Okay, and it's needless to say that we are assuming that the graph is connected. Otherwise, there is no point talking about consensus in such graphs, right? So for now, it's undirected, unweighted graphs. So the third result uh, that we are going to be using is, let's say you have zi's scalars which are greater than zero. So summation of i one through n. Okay, and we also have the converse version of it. So usually, by triangle inequality, we would have that if p is greater than one, then the sort of inequality flips. But if we still want to retain this inequality, it actually turns out that inequality is still holds true. But then you have to sort of multiply it with this particular factor. Okay, so that's result number three, and result number four. So if one transpose x is equal to zero, that means x is orthogonal to the consensus vector, right? When I say one transpose x is equal to zero, that means x is orthogonal to the consensus vector. So that means that vector x does not have any components in the uh, in the direction of the consensus vector, right? So this is true. Then x transpose L of x. This is greater than or equal to. I mean, x transpose L of x is always greater than or equal to zero. It's a positive semi-definite matrix. But it's not since this vector x has no component in the uh, in the direction of the consensus vector. And the only eigenvalue is zero, and zero is the eigenvalue in the dire dire basically direction of the consensus vector, right? So this is going to be greater than the Fiedler eigenvalue times square. That is the second smallest eigenvalue, right? So the smallest eigenvalue is zero. Second smallest eigenvalue is a Fiedler value, and this is going to be true if one transpose x is zero or x is orthogonal to the consensus vector. Okay. So these are the four results that we are going to be using. All right. So one definition or one notation rather that we would be using is so x can be vector here, and it's defined as x times. Okay. So what? So it's it's almost like signum function. So when mu is equal to zero. 
sine 0 of x is essentially x over norm of x right which is which is yes which is like a signal function okay so the sine of that particular so it's almost like when x is scalar this almost acts like a signal function right so we are going to be using this notation to denote this particular quantity so well you can have mu greater than equal to 0 that's fine yeah I mean the reason that we are going to be using this notation is because we know that in the context of fixed time stability we would have certain exponents coming in right and this is what this is why we are like in order to make it more compact we are going to be using this notation okay so the fixed time consensus scheme is x dot rather x i dot uh, so if i look at if i look at this particular thing right this was simply x i dot is summation j or like basically the x i minus x j right j over uh, the neighborhood set this j over the neighborhood set now i am going to be using this new notation signum okay so again if if you remove the signum new one and signal new two part or the sine new one sine new two part it's exactly a standard consensus algorithm but because we want to use a fixed time stability result i somehow need to in incorporate these uh, these exponents mu1 and mu2 with mu1 being a number between 0 and 1 and mu2 greater than 1 and you want both these numbers to be odd so when i say odd so when mu2 is greater than 1 and, and a choice could be let's say 5 third or this could be mu1 could be 1 third. So this is what we want mu1 and mu2 to look like where the both numerators and denominators are odd. And the reason being as I said this is true for any odd function and not just sine function right. So we want when I raise it to the power which is, some, which is something odd right then this would also be true. Okay, and that is why that is why we are actually going to be choosing mu1 and mu2, which are which have this odd behavior, like odd like characteristic. Okay, so this is my scheme. Let's see how this works and why does this converge in in a fixed time. So first thing is we are going to be summing this x i dot. And what does this quantity converge to? So what is this number? X i dot. If I just sum it over i 1 through n. Yes, yeah, sum of this, right? And using this particular property, we know that this sum is going to be 0. Okay. Is everyone with me on this? So if I just sum this from 1 through n, this, this quantity is going to be 0 and this quantity is going to sum to 0. So this is going to be 0. And therefore, we know that summation i 1 through n x i t is constant. Okay. The summation is going to be constant always. No, mu 1 for odd numbers as well, it is going to be because it is an odd function right this becomes an odd function so for any odd function this would be true ok. So in order to show consensus what kind of Lyapunov functions can we choose. So this time we do not want it to converge to 0 or anything like, like in the previous case we want f minus f star we want like we had worked with f minus f star or gradient of f of x norm square that those were the choices for the Lyapunov function right this time we do not want so what quantity do we want it like uh, 
basically what quantity do we want it to converge to 0? Not x star. So, if I define let us say let us say I define x c to be 1 over n this is my this is where I would I expect the consensus to happen right. And if I define x tilde i to be x i minus x c this x tilde i is, is what I want it to converge to 0 yeah for all i yeah. Okay. So, what would be a good choice of Lyapunov candidate? So, we can choose V to be something like this. Okay. Is this clear? Because V is going to be 0 when the agents arrive at consensus and otherwise they it is going to be greater than 0 all right ok. So, what is x i tilde dot this is going to be x i dot minus x c dot and x c dot is something that that is going to be that is 0 we know right. So, this is nothing but x i dot. So, that is one thing that we should know. So, derivative of this is same as x i dot ok. So, let us take the time derivative of the Apno function Okay. Now I'll substitute the let's substitute the value of x i dot. So let's also write what x i tilde transpose. So sine mu one of x i minus x j. This is same as x i tilde minus x i x j tilde right because we are just sub subtracting adding and subtracting x c. So, the difference between x i and x j is same as difference between x i tilde and x j tilde. Uh, because uh, we have chosen mu 1 and mu 2 to be odd. So, this function is odd, these functions are odd and this is where I can use my second result which is summation i 1 through n j n n i e i transpose some odd function of x i j that is equal to this particular quantity which, which is now written in terms of e i j. Okay. So, I can write this as summation Okay. Is everyone with me so far? Any questions on this? So, what is the definition of this uh, new defined signum function? By definition, this is x i tilde j, x tilde i j times norm of x tilde i j raised to the power mu 1 minus 1, right? So, norm mu 1 minus 1 and you have additional x tilde ij that makes it norm nu square norm square. So, mu 1 minus 1 plus 2 which is nu 1 plus 1. So, let me know if uh, you guys did not follow this.
again how why because we had this particular definition so at x times norm raised to the power mu minus 1 and you have uh, x and there was an additional x tilde transpose setting there so that gives you x transpose x which basically becomes norm x square so this basically becomes mu plus 1 ok is this clear So, a i j is just 1s or 0, right? So, summation j in n i, I can write it summation j 1 through n and if a i j is 0, then the anyway they do not contribute or a i j is 1, so then they contribute, right? And this is what I am just, I mean in equivalent way to write this, ok? So, now what do we do? So, if I know that mu 1 is a number between 0 and 1, so is 1 plus mu 1 by 2, that is a number between 0 and 1. And if nu2 is a number greater than 1 and so is 1 plus mu nu2 by 2, right? So, therefore, now I can use this particular result, yes, ok. So, we because we brought everything in this form. So, let me define, let me call this, let us say, neta ij, neta ij. So, what do we have? we have summation half i 1 through n ok and in order to take the summation inside we need to use these two results, ok. So, this thing is less than or equal to ok plus for the other one I need to in introduce addition but it is not n, how many terms are there? n square because every ij pair is there, right? So, we are summing it as n i. We are summing it, yeah, yeah, this is n, yes, n raised to the power 1 minus p. So, p is 1 plus Now, all we want to now do is to be able to write eta ij in terms of my usual x tilde ij and if I am able to do that, then this would be, I mean I have basically written the Lyapunov function in terms of, uh, in fact, what you can do is you can also absorb i, I in, inside it. So, let us do that and let me do one thing, let me get rid of this part. So, we can absorb i as well inside it, right? I mean, what is preventing us to so nothing but half. ij 1 through n. Now, if I include let us say all the terms here, 
So now this is summation n, the n square many terms, right? So you can write this as less than or equal to negative half. You get Okay, this is everyone is okay with this. Now, what is this term? Summation eta ij, it's nothing but summation ij 1 through n. By definition, this is aij x tilde ij is norm square, right? And we had seen this already that x tilde transpose lx is summation ij 1 through n. Aij in the previous lectures, xi minus xj square, which basically is the same thing, right? Okay, so that's something that we had already seen. So this is nothing but x tilde transpose lx. Okay, and we know that another property is one transpose x tilde that is equal to zero because it's xi minus xj, right? So one transpose x tilde is going to be zero, okay? So that means x tilde is orthogonal to your uh, consensus vector and therefore this quantity is greater than or equal to lambda 2 okay? And with because it's a negative sign, so what we can show is this thing is less than or equal to minus half. Now you have uh, still norm x tilde square, let us say lambda 2 plus n square 1 minus nu 2 by 2 norm x tilde square. And norm x tilde square is nothing but your v, 2 times v. Sorry, not square, 1 plus nu 1 by 2, thanks. square okay and this is nothing but your 2 times Lyapunov function 2 times Lyapunov function now you have gotten everything in terms of v dot is less than or equal to some c times v1 raised to the alpha 1 minus c2 raised to the times v, v raised to the alpha 2 and therefore you are guaranteed to converge in a fixed time and therefore this consensus scheme it runs in a fixed time. So, it converges in a fixed time. Lambda 2 would also have power, yes. And yeah, lambda 2 absorbed here. Okay. So let us call this C1, this is C2. So you have V dot is less than C1 V raised to the alpha 1 minus C2 V raised to the alpha 2 with alpha 1 in a, a number between 0 and 1 and alpha 2 greater than 1, which implies scheme converges in a fixed time. Okay. So, this is a fixed time convergent uh, consensus scheme, average consensus scheme. We missed what? We Okay, so fixed time convergent
and again this result is pretty new so it, i think in 20 you will find the genesis in 2017 28 papers in 2017 18 and beyond but again the idea is so how do we design something like this you know how you can potentially arrive at a particular result right what what you need to show and that basically gives you I mean, some idea as to what kind of properties a dynamical system must have. And this is pretty much the recipe of designing new algorithms, be in the context of optimization or now in the context of uh, uh, consensus. So in the next le set of lectures, we are now going to be using this consensus scheme and an optimization scheme which is going to be gradient based, combining the two schemes to guarantee uh, not just the consensus. But this time consensus to the optimal solution of the team objective function or the global objective function. So which is the uh, distributed optimization problem that we are seeking so, solution to. Okay. Can we increase this to the directed? You can. Uh, I mean it's 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 non I mean it's I would say it's non-trivial. Under here. Yeah. So a lot of it did, yeah. Lot of, in fact, uh, there are certain results where you do not need the graph to be connected at all times, but uh, the graph can be connected over a period, over any consecutive period of L time points. So it's called L connected. That means any period, con continue, contiguous period of L time points, the graph is going to be connected, or any contiguous duration of L, the graph is going to be connected. So in that case, uh, so in that case also, you can extend these. Undirected case, yeah. Or even like even if it's directed, I'm saying that you strongly connected. For this to for this result to follow, yeah, I agree. I agree. For this result to follow, you need the graph to be symmetric, and in that case, for directed graphs, it's going to be somewhat challenging. So one way to, for instance, when you work with directed graphs, is uh, you. I mean, it's first, it's non-trivial extension of what, in fact, even the standard consensus algorithm, it's a non-trivial extension of that to, I mean, guarantee, like basically to come up with something which basically guarantees convergence in the context of uh, directed graph. So that is there for sure. So one thing that you need to, so is the Lyapunov function here, V, in this particular case, when we chose V, is V a function of the underlying topology? Is V a function of underlying? No, right? Nowhere V in the struct. So, yeah, so one thing that you can see here is in the convergence. So, what is the settling time? If you had something like this C1, 1 minus alpha 1 plus 1 over C2, alpha 2 minus 1, right? So, if you have the Fiedler value, that Fiedler value comes in the denominator. So, larger Fiedler value means smaller diameter, right, faster convergence. So larger Fiedler value means faster convergence and that's what you see over here. So the settling time is first of all inversely proportional to the Fiedler value. Fiedler value will show up here. So Fiedler value, that larger Fiedler value means fast, faster consensus because it means a smaller diameter and faster consensus. And you see that the in this case, the settling time is also dependent on the Fiedler value. So if you have larger Fiedler value, the settling time becomes smaller and vice versa. Okay, so that's one thing that you should note. The other thing, uh, the underlying topology doesn't show up in the definition of V, right? So it is independent of topology. So all these results hold true even if the graph is time varying. What do we mean? So at any instant, you can have the graph switch from one particular topology to another, like let's say right now it's a star topology and at time t equal to 10, it immediately switches to a ring topology. So as long as the graph is going to be connected, this result is going to hold true no matter what. Okay, so, so the consensus, it's still good, the consensus scheme is still going to be executed in a fixed time, even if the graph is time varying. So the scheme works for time varying graphs. 
and in that case the settling time you just choose a fiddler value for the graph which has the largest settling uh, which has the uh, which has the smallest fiddler value and that would be that settling time of the overall algorithm even if the graph is time varying okay so this scheme is going to work even if you keep switching the topology every now and then this scheme is going to work as long as your the network is connected I can ref, like point you to my papers. So we have run, we have done this for in the context of distributed optimization. Uh, but then the, I mean, the idea is like if you have a topology, let's say five nodes like this, or you have something like this. So if, I mean, if at different times it just keeps switching, the topology keeps changing. But if you assume that the underlying graph is connected, you are guaranteed to uh, converge in a fixed amount of time and in that case you would use a settling time for the graph which uh, which has the sm uh, smallest Fiedler eigenvalue or the largest diameter. Okay. No, so if you that's why if you choose the maximum one, the one with like the one the, or the one with the smallest uh, Fiedler value, then then you are fine. Right? What do you mean? Yeah, I mean it's the same graph, just the topology, the network is changing. Your neighbors are changing essentially. Yeah, then then it's not. Yeah, it's the same graph, just your the sub -graph. connections are changing. It's a sub -graph. Not a subgraph, just the connections are changing. Like right now, you you so if for instance, if I look at these. So initially one was a neighbor of two and one was a neighbor of three. Now one is a neighbor of two. So you, you can be changing connections with your neighbors may be changing evolving, but then you may still, uh, as long as the underlying graph is connected or the network is connected, this result would hold. So design for maximum. Yeah, design for like, so the guarantee that you're going to be providing in of the, on the settling time is going to be in terms of the graph with the smallest fielder value. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in that case, yeah. So if you if you if you want to define like if let's say when x is a vector, so this x transpose instead of working with L, we work with uh, the Kronecker product. But it, I mean, none none of it none of those results change. Yes, this is what we work. So that yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't want to complicate the proof too much, so I didn't really go into it. But uh, if you have a vector valued x, then uh, you essentially use the L chronicle product uh, identity. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah